Throughout sports history, there have been great athletes who have went out on top. But for every great athlete that rides off into the sunset, there's always more that come up short. For every John Elway, there's a Brett Favre. But unlike Favre and NASCAR, the previous year with Jeff Gordon, everyone knew it was ending. A glorious career was coming to its end. But what happens when you don't know it's the end? That was shown in the 2016 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season with Carl Edwards. This is his story. In 2015, Carl Edwards switched over from longtime racing team Roush Fenway Racing to Joe Gibbs Racing. The switch paid off well for Edwards as he won two crown jewels, the Coca-Cola 600 and the Southern 500 in his first year with JGR. Along with this, he also ran consistently and finished fifth in the final point standings. But with teammate Kyle Busch winning the 2015 championship and teammates Matt Kenseth and Denny Hamlin putting up better numbers in either the wins, top tens, or even both categories, it put Edwards in an odd position. He was arguably the third best, if not fourth best driver team at JGR. But entering 2016, Edwards quickly was putting up a consistent effort to be the top dog at JGR. With two fifth place runs to open the season, Edwards had speed, and it nearly paid off at Phoenix. It's never been a last lap pass at Phoenix. Here, he Here comes Carl. He's under him. Oh, He's, Carl under him. He's gonna move him up the race track. him up the hill. Here he comes. Wow, look at him slam. That's gonna be oh. wow. too close to call. I can't call that one. Did you see them hitting one another? I think Harvey got it by a fraction of an inch. I think one hundredth of a second. After leading 65 laps, it came down to one one-hundredth of a second. The following races only continued to prove Edwards' validity for a title, as he posted two sevenths and a sixth, as well as leading 124 laps after winning the pole. His first win of the season was inevitably coming. And after dominating 276 of the 500 laps from the pole at Bristol, he cruised into a locked position into the 2016 chase. Earnhardt, Bush. Elliott and Bain for the top five. Checkered flag in the air. Carl Edwards dominates Bristol. Uh-oh. Spot the landing, buddy. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's, it's on the banking. Woo, perfect. Yeah. But the 19 team wasn't done yet. As of the following race weekend at Richmond, he dueled teammate and defending champion Kyle Busch for the win. Traffic ahead. Kyle Busch the leader. Look at this. Carl Look at Edwards this. right Look at there. This. Moves wow. him to win it. Carl yeah, Edwards yeah. bumping. Dump and run. Oh, God. How oh, did no. he pull that off? That's a teammate. Not sure he expected that either. Taking I... home the checkered flag. Today's Sunoco fueling victory. In the span of three weeks, Edwards led 551 laps and won two races, beating Kyle Busch at his best track. But just as fast as the hot start was, so too was the fall off, as the next four races were all finishes outside of the top 10. The up and down season continued, as the following four races then produced a top five and three top tens. Edwards would also once again get a shot at victory at Kentucky due to fuel strategy. With fuel, he's got it fired up again. He's pulling away from the 19. Two back. Two back. The battle for the win. Brad Keselowski, does he have enough fuel to get through three and four into the finish line? Carl Edwards right on his back bumper. Coming out of turn four. He's going to have enough. Brad Keselowski will win. Over the following eight races, Edwards would limp into the chase, scoring no top fives and averaging just over an 18th place finish. The opening round would not inspire any hope either, as the 19 team slept walk through it with finishes of 15th, 6th, and 14th. Due to poor performances by fellow chasers, a 12th place finish at Charlotte put Edwards in a good position from the start of the second round. And even with fellow chaser Kevin Harvick winning, Edwards coming in second basically ensured him to the third round. To his benefit and the fans' dismay, Edwards laid back for the entirety of the Talladega race and walked into the third round. Opening the round of eight, Edwards had to overcome one of his worst tracks, Martinsville. He seemed to slowly be doing it as he went from running in the mid-teens to coming up into the bottom half of the top ten. Of course, this was before disaster struck. I'm not sure if that came before or after the right front tire went flat. 
He was running ninth right before they started to pit under green flag conditions. Look how bent up the fender is. A lot of fender damage. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, that's a lot of damage. You gotta, here's the replay. So on board right here, oh, that looks like a melted beef for sure. Oh. It just goes straight, and that is some heavy contact. I don't think that's just sheet metal damage. No, that is that's big heavy, impact. heavy contact. The incident pushed Edwards back to a 36th place finish. Just as in 2015, Martinsville had put Edwards behind the eight ball in the round of eight. But unlike 2015 where the rain derailed his championship effort, Edwards was granted a gift by the rain at Texas. have just been told that they can get out of their cars. And so we're seeing Carl Edwards climb out of his car, but he stays close by. And look at the celebration. It has just been declared official. Carl Edwards wins at Texas. Edwards would go on to join Jimmy Johnson and then Kyle Busch and Joey Logano as the final four for the championship in Miami. Edwards and his Joe Gibbs team really had two weeks to prepare for the final race of the season. And Edwards did seem prepared, starting in 10. Carl, a few years ago, we saw you and Tony Stewart battle it out for a championship. You came up a little bit short. Tell us about your emotions trying to get that first championship. Oh, man, I woke up this morning ready to go. I actually drove over to the track early. Uh, I'm just so excited for the opportunity. I can't thank everybody enough for putting me here. We've got a great crew, got a great car, all the Aeros folks, Dave Rogers, a bunch of folks from Missouri, Cessna flew them here, so uh, really got to be a fun race. Well, you have three people you're competing against. They're all very good. What is it going to take to come out on top? I think you have to win the race. I mean, these guys are the best. and It's, uh, you know, it's been a, just a, a real, uh, a lot of fun to hang out with them this week. I know everybody's pumped, though. It's going to be serious competition, and uh, if we can beat them, there's going to be a lot of pride in that. While starting behind teammate Kyle Busch, Edwards asserted himself early as the driver to beat for the title, really only being challenged by Joey Logano. While Kyle Larson dominated the race, all eyes were on the 19. And with 55 to go, Edwards was fourth out of the four championship contenders. He needed to make a charge. Edwards quickly got past Jimmy Johnson. With 36 to go, he would then pass Joey Logano. So right here, he's going to try to get underneath him. He got that big run on corner exit, running to the top. Now he's going to try to slide up in front of Joey Logano. I think he'll be able to pull that off easily. Let's see where he goes now. He's All that was left between Carl Edwards and his first championship was the defending champion himself, Kyle Busch. While Busch put up the toughest fight, he was no match for the heiress Toyota. Carl Edwards into turn three. He has the advantage. He takes second away from Kyle Busch. Carl Edwards once again leading the championship four. One more time, Nice and smooth. Let's drive away. 24 laps to go. Kyle Busch, does he look to the inside and try to take the spot back? That lower line working for the 18 now as well. Not able to clear him. For the title, Kyle Busch battling back on the inside. Carl Edwards keeps the momentum up on the high side. All Edwards needed to do was run out the laps, finish ahead of the other three, and go on to win his first championship. The laps began to click down until 16 to go when the caution flew. Now, it was up to the teams to give a championship level service to the cars. Tony Jack and Alsage can't rotate the center, needs more drive off. The call has been for four tires and more wedge adjustment. We've seen a lot of that from the 48 throughout the course of the day. This is the money stop for the 48, giving them an opportunity. Kelly. And the 19 of Carl Edwards said he was a little bit tight to start, but that could have been the dirt.
dirty air, so I don't see any adjustments, just four times, a little bit of fuel. You guys made the point, gas man Tom Lampy went to the front of the car to carry a tire, now grabs the fuel, puts a little bit in. We had a slip at the back of the 18. Jake Seminara is back up, but he... With a blistering fast 11.5 second pit stop, the 19 was put ahead of all the other championship drivers. He was in the catbird seat for the restart. The restart that would define Carl Edwards' career. This time champion Jimmy Johnson, the car just hasn't agreed with him. Chad Kanash, you heard him before the pit stop. What do we need? Big adjustments on the 48 and to his outside. The 18 to Kambush, a poor pit stop, but now he lines up in the outside. No one's better rolling the top than the 18 to Kambush. And you can bet Kambush will try to make that happen. He's unbelievably good on that outside on restarts. 10 to go. They're coming to the restart zone. Kyle Larson on the outside. Carl Edwards on the inside. Green flag back in the air. They're blocking. Good going down low. Carl Edwards into the wall. He got tagged by the 22. Yellow, 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 yellow. Big hits by the 19. And the caution comes back out again. That is exactly what we saw Joy Logano was going to try to do. Carl sees him coming. He goes to block. 22 does not slow up. Stays in the throttle. Big wreck. And the 22 really ended up getting a lot better out of that situation because I, it looked as though Brad Keselowski laid completely off of him, the 22's teammate. Well, he wanted nothing to do with it. He didn't want anything to do with the accident or the championship battle. But you see the 48's blocking the, tw the two to the bottom. And listen, if you're a Carl Edwards fan, you're upset at Joey Logano. If you're a Joey Logano fan, you're upset at Carl Edwards. That right there is Joey Logano being aggressive, making a very, very aggressive move, but he got a good restart. Carl Edwards had no choice but to block. If he doesn't turn left, Joey Logano's next to him, entering turn one. He's in the middle of three wide. Worst possible scenario for Carl. Carl turns left, trying to block a championship on the line. Joey's there in a big wreck, and you can I don't blame Carl Edwards. Not at all. He had to block. That's what he had to try to do. But I don't blame Joey Logano, because if he lifts with 10 to go, it's over. He's lost the championship right there. He didn't hit the 19 in the bumper. He was inside the left rear bumper cover of the 19 of Carl Edwards. You see, he's walking it off. It's just the frustration. It's the size of the moment. A championship on the In the blink of an eye, it was gone. A full season's worth of effort destroyed before the first corner. But Edwards stayed true to the driver he was throughout his career, sportsman and all. Look at, look at Carl Edwards. Look at Carl Edwards. That, I mean, listen, he's smiling. He goes up. He's having a conversation with everything on a line. He, he shook their hands. I mean, I, yeah. Listen, I, I don't blame him for being frustrated or being upset because it's a championship, but taking time to go to them and have a conversation, I mean, that would have been difficult for me to do. In fact, he told Todd Gordon, he said, tell Joey, go get it, go win this thing. So that's what he told Todd Gordon when he went out there, shook everybody's hand on top of that pit box, said, my fault, 100%. I'm sorry that I got that I came across his nose like that. So what a class move by Carl Edwards. And we saw that after the 2011 championship. First guy to Tony Stewart's window, Carl Edwards. Tonight, a big wreck here. First guy up to apologize, Carl Edwards. Yeah, here, let me watch it again. Yeah, Joey just timed it perfectly. He moved down. I thought I could feel him a little, and I just thought that uh, that's probably a little optimistic. But I thought uh, I thought I'd clear him or force him to lift. I just thought I'd have just a little more time. But he drove down as far as a guy could be um, expected to drive down, and that's how it ended. As it would turn out, this would be the final day Edwards would be in the spotlight of NASCAR. In one of the most shocking announcements in NASCAR history, Carl Edwards retired before the 2017 season. He would never be a champion at NASCAR's highest level. And it really makes many wonder, what if that caution doesn't fly? What if Carl Edwards doesn't wreck on that restart? What if, in 2016, Carl Edwards were to capture his missing ring?